What's going on guys, your boy Amazing, we're back with another video, and in today's video guys, we're going over the Demonic Beast Battle, Ithereum here guys, and going over the best gear sets, the best teams, the best card sets, and all that in this video, while also doing a demo run to show you guys how to actually clear the fight, and explaining the mechanics of everything you need to know. Before we actually hop into the video, make sure to subscribe to your boy Amazing, I put a lot of work into this video guys, so if you want to, you know, show support for your boy, subscribe, like the video, and all that stuff, if you want to see more guides like this, definitely make sure to like and subscribe, and and without the way, guys, let's hop in and let's go over the best teams to actually be running on Ithernir. All right, guys, so we have the Ithernir Floor 3 meta teams graphic here pulled up that I actually made. In this, guys, it shows you guys six teams you can use that are going to be some of the best teams that I've actually run when doing Ithernir going through it. And then we also have some notes on the side, guys, to explain things that, you know, you might want to know when actually going through the fight and uh, for the actual Demonic Beast battle itself. So as you guys can see, the Ithernir Floor 3 meta teams, we have the original RGB team, which is red green blue so we have Jormungand, the one eskinor freyer and brunhild we do also have the human speed farm team which is going to be Jormungand, lr eskinor uh red levi and then, and then also uh blue roxy and then we also do have for the unknown basic stat team guys we have Jormungand, we have roxy freyer and Danashi. and then for the full goddess team here this is the only team that does not require Jormungand that you can actually run here but we have uh mael lr margaret lr elizabeth and then also elat right there we also do have the Jormungand and demon team guys we have Jormungand, Esterosa, um, LV, uh, Meliodas and then also the green Melascula and then for the final team here guys that I definitely recommend you guys test out is going to be the Jormungand, Chad King, uh, Scotty and Brunhild team now for the notes that I wanted to mention about these teams all characters that have holy relics are being used for this guide Jormungand would preferably want to have a relic as it makes the runs a lot smoother you don't need relics for any of these characters on this list guys so don't worry too much other than the fact that it makes your run a lot easier right if you have holy relics for like Jormungand or if you have holy relics for like Freyr these are going to make your runs a lot easier and so it's definitely recommended that you have holy relics if you have them um if you don't have the holy relics for all the characters here it's going to be still fine and you should be able to actually beat the fight now for the next thing here that I have to mention is going to be the holy relic icon so you guys can see every character that has a holy relic has it on this uh on this graphic right here so you can see this is what the holy relic uh icon looks like and then for the uh, red tarmio link right here guys this is only given to the character that wants to be taking the damage now for every team other than the full guys team it's going to be yorm again and then for the full guys team it's actually going to be elat so that is kind of the idea uh, in terms of running the red tarmio link now for the flex options here guys so there are many flex options for characters on each of these teams whether they are dps or support for example if you do not have freyr for the original rgb team right here um you can use scotty right that's a good example right there so if you don't have freyr you can run scotty if you don't have brunhild you can run you know roxy if you don't have lr eskinor you can run brunhild stuff like that man there's a ton of flex option you guys can run when doing the deer and so those are just a few examples of characters you could run in place for some of the teams that i have here in the video guys we actually are going to be showing off the original rgb team in terms of the one that we're going to be running but every other team here is going to be very very good for the fight and the only one that i'd say is you need to be kind of a whale would probably be a little bit of the uh, for the goddess team and then the human team i think other than that though the rest of the teams are fairly you know straightforward for a lot of people and you guys can just jump into them i think even the the unknown basic stat team is very accessible for a lot of people if you have the characters as well but yeah man that, those are going to be the meta teams right there guys in terms of the ike Dernier, uh demonic beast battle and if you guys are going to be running any of these teams this is what uh, i recommend all right guys so for the ithernir best artifact card sets we have two card sets you guys are going to be using on the ithernir i want to mention one thing about the ithernir's refuge though is that for ithernir's refuge the uh, freeze immunity can actually be a hindrance on i think it's floor two phase two we'll talk about it when we actually do the demo run but for the actual card set the immunity to freeze can actually be a detriment but for the most part that card set is still very good and can still be run now with that out of the way let's talk about it so for the notes right here the ithernir's refuge is used when running any team with mixed race characters the card set is a universal demonic beast battle 10 percent basic stat increase and then for the example team here we have Jormungand, the one eskinor uh freyer and then brunil so the original rgb team and then uh, yeah you do get 10 percent basic stats and then immunity to freeze at maximum ultimate move gauge for the second card set here, guys, that I definitely recommend is going to be the Twilight Temple. Uh, Twilight Temple is used when running any team with mono race characters. The card set gives 15% attack related stats only if your team consists of characters with the same race. So for the example team here, we have Jormungand, Roxy, Freyr, and Nanashi, and it's going to be 15% attack related stats for the full unknown team or any team that is of mono race.
All right, guys, so hopping into the Ithirner special gear here, man, we have a special gear for mainly Brunhild. So as you guys can see here on the left side of the screen, it shows the gear that I actually do run for Brunhild. We run crit chance rolls on both the top pieces right here to total load at an 120, 126% uh, crit chance right there for my Brunhild. And then for the actual notes here, crit chance roll gear is only used for DPS characters who need to crit for their damage. You do not need to run this on every DPS character, only the ones who need more crit chance. So Brunhild is a character that you know she doesn't have too much crit chance at base she has what pretty much going into is just like 80 something percent so if you can make that over a hundred percent with the Jormungan all stats that she actually does provide you're going to be up at the you know around the like 180 percent uh crit chance range which pretty much means you guaranteed crit in the deer and then for the other note i have here guys is all other gear that isn't mentioned here for their uh, respective sets and their respective characters is going to be the regular base uh roles that you would run and in the regular gear so for example a dps character like Freyr uses four set attack and two set crit damage gear with basic stat rolls. So that is kind of the idea. Normally you're going to be running, you know, attack crit on your DPS, HP defense on your, on your tank characters. But another way you can actually check it as well, guys, is in the actual game in Grand Cross, if you go to the actual character themselves. So if I go to like, as an example, let's say I'm running a uh, Lost Vein on the, uh, the Lost Vein team, right? The demon team. Um, if we actually click on this button right here, it's going to tell you the recommended gear set that you want to be running. So right here for Las Vegas says attack and then crit damage. So you know that it's going to be four set attack to set critical damage. So that is how you guys kind of get the idea for what gear you're going to be running on Ithernir. So now let's actually move on guys and talk about the passives of the fight. All right, guys, so before we actually do the run with the teams here, I want to actually show you guys the passes, and I want to talk about which passes are going to be beneficial for you and which ones are going to be really bad. Um, so starting with floor one here, you only get, uh, what is it? Um, yeah, you only get two passes here, but one is guaranteed that you're going to be getting. So the first one here, you have to get it. It's going to increase the hero's basic stats by 100% when an enemy uses a rank up skill during the enemy's turn. That is, uh, you know, one of the things that is part of the deer is that whenever you use a rank up character, the boss actually does gain basic stats which means you cannot bring red gother green gother any of those you cannot bring them man as long as they have a rank up skill they're not going to be able to be brought um for the phase three though which is a actual passive that will matter um when you look at these right here the best one that you guys want to be getting is going to be desperate resolve this fills the hero's ultimate movement gauge by two orbs at the start of the battle which is not really going to affect you too much even if the the deer actually does get his ultimate it's not really going to affect you um because his ultimate really doesn't do a lot of damage anyway especially on the earlier floors um but if you look at like uh you know this uh, armor destruction one right here this one's kind of bad because it lowers your defense related by 40 percent and then the damage taken decrease one is also a little bit annoying because the boss just has inherent damage reduction whereas this one's not really doing anything to him all right guys so moving on to floor two and the passes for floor two that you uh that you actually want to get um for the passes here none of them are too crazy for phase two right here guys this one right here increases h relate stats by two percent at the start of the allies turn if the hero takes damage and this one is not really one that you want to get because that means the deer has started turn healing and also can life steal as well which is going to be a little bit annoying for the floor two phase two second passive here it applies an effect on the hero which increases max hp by 15 percent at the start of the battle this one's not too bad because max hp isn't really going to be um you know too too much of a, of a difference versus HP related HP related obviously is going to be a lot more right so max HP is actually not that bad and you can still deal enough damage anyway to hit those damage caps so it's not really going to affect you too much with max HP and then the defense related one after surviving an ultimate can actually be a detriment for you so I'd say probably the best one is going to be the middle passive right here for the phase four passive of floor two guys you definitely do not want to get the ultimate move gauge decrease one this one's going to decrease the ultimate move gauges by two orbs when the hero enters the battle which definitely does mess you up because that applies every single phase of the fight so if you're going into phase one phase two phase three phase four as long as you have this passive right here you're going to be losing your ultimate move gauge two orbs by the time you uh, load in which is definitely going to suck a lot because that means you can't prep an ultimate for a phase if you're trying to color cycle which definitely sucks um these other passives right here are really good if you get the attack increase one or the basic stat one i think both of these are way better than getting this one so regardless of whatever passive you get as long as it's this one or this one i think you're uh, doing pretty good but yeah guys let's move on to the floor three passives now as well so for floor or three phase two guys for the passes that you guys actually want to get i don't think most of them really matter too much um the first one's just going to be inherent 50 percent critical damage for the boss this one's actually going to be uh five percent critical damage per hero skill use this one's not too bad because it has a, uh, it's obviously a buildup um this one right here is increases attack related stats by two percent at the start of the allies turn if the hero took damage this one's actually very good because you're not going to be very long in the fight in terms of the amount of turns that are actually on this phase so i think this one's definitely very good and then this one right here increases the hero's crit 
chance crit damage as the hero's remaining HP decreases, which is not too bad because he's not really going to be doing as much as just like inherent 50% crit damage. All right, guys. So for phase four, none of the passes really matter too much. I think any of them that you actually get at this point in the fight is not really going to matter really. Um, if you get the applies for ignites on, on all enemies when assuming a stance, this one's fine because you're not going to get to that stance phase when doing the, the run. Um, this one right here increases the attack of the, uh, of, by a value equal to 15% of the hero's defense at the start of the battle. That was not too crazy either because you're not really taking a ton of damage on that last phase. And then for the last passive here, guys, it decreases all enemies max HP by the value of 100% of the hero's defense. That one also isn't that bad because as I said again, you're going to be pretty much tanking by that time you're on the phase four of floor three. So yeah, man, that pretty much covers the passes, guys. Let's hop into the actual run now and we'll show you guys the, uh, the gimmicks and explain everything you need to know about the actual fight itself. All right, guys, so this is the team that we're actually using here, as I mentioned at the, uh, earlier in the video. So you're running the one Eskinor, Brunhild, Jormungen, and Freyr. This is going to be the original RGB team. Now, for the actual artifact card set, we are running the basic stat one because we do have different race characters on the team. So we're not going to be able to run the uh, same attack-related card set or the, the same race attack-related one. So we have to do run the basic stat one, which is still fine. And then uh, for the actual equipment here, guys, this is a given. So DPS characters like the one Eskinor, Freyr are going to be on attack crit damage. Same with Brunhild. But remember, Brenhill does have the crit chance rolls on her because we want her to actually be critting when doing the fight. And then we also do have Jormungand here, guys, on her attack defense set, as this is going to be her recommended gear set for uh, Ithirnir. So let's hop in here, man, and let's see what this team is able to do. All right, guys, so we are loading into the first floor of the Ike Theonir Demonic Beast Battle. Guys, we're going to be explaining everything you guys need to know about color cycle, about regular damage, about what the boss is actually going to do to you. So let's cover it in this video, guys. So one thing I want to mention right before we actually hop into the phases themselves is I'm going to explain which phases are going to be color cycling phase and how you actually do a color cycle. So for you guys that don't know, color cycle is going to be attacking the attribute advantage in a, in a color cycle, right? You start from one color and and go all the way to the third color so as an example if i was attacking the deer and i wanted to do a color cycle i would start and if i start with like the one escadors card that's going to be a blue card because he has blue attribute on on his actual character uh card and then if we actually go to another character we're going to follow up with a red card because remember we're following the type advantage chart so blue beats red red beats green green beats blue right so we start with blue then we want to do a freyer card next because we're going to be doing a blue red card and then we follow up with a green card now one thing I want to mention as well about Jormungand's passive that you want to take advantage of is that Jormungand, the way she works, um, at the start of every turn in Demonic Beast Battle, Ithirnir applies an effect on all allies which increases all stats by 30% for two turns, and if uh, three allies each use skills once or more, the same effect is applied to all allies again. So there is tech that you can do to actually keep Jormungand's passive going when actually going about the, the deer fight. Alright guys, so if I wanted to proc Jormungand's passive here and actually keep her 30% all stats going for everyone on the team, we would want to make sure that we do two cards with one character and then one of each of the other cards. Or we do one of... Uh, of three characters cards as well so as an example if i was to do escanor escanor here that would be two cards of escanor but then i can also do one uh you know a brunhild card and then one jormungand card and that would actually give me the 30 percent all stats because remember when you look at her passive here it mentions that if three allies meaning three characters it doesn't have to be more than three but three allies each use skills once or more so if i use two skills with uh the one escanor I actually do gain the all stats again from jormungand so let's reset here guys um and and let's also mention another thing is that phase one here of the deer um he's not really doing too much to you he does have this spike single target and then he does have aoe pierce and then for his ultimate it's gonna be uh just straight up attack percent so nothing too crazy i think he does also have damage cap if i'm not mistaken not on this phase but on later phases as well so that's just something to to explain at the beginning so you guys know all right now that we know all of that preliminary information let's hop in and let's uh let's actually do the fight so right here on this first turn guys you want to just make sure you get your again all stats so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do the one Eskinor card. I'm actually going to do a Brunhild card right here. I'm going to do a Jormungand card. So that's going to be three different characters attacking right there. And then we're actually going to move Freyr's card right there to make sure we keep the all stats. Um, if I wanted to go into the next phase right now, I probably could have went in anyway. But we want to make sure that we have the all stats up so that we get a lot 
lot more tanky so you guys will see here we only get the 30 percent all stats refresh but what happens here as well is that um when he does after he finishes his attacking cycle here we actually will get the second uh 30 percent all stats because it reapplies from your man's passive so you guys will see we'll we'll pretty much be able to have 60 percent all stats every single turn on the fight so as you guys can see now every character on the team actually does have 60 percent all stats because we have the 30 percent from the first turn and then the second turns uh all stats as well so what we want to do here guys is kind of just waste cards as we move into the next phase since we're not going to be able to keep your man's passive going we might as well just clear out our hand so i'm actually going to do this for the, uh right here we're actually going to waste this card as well and i'm going to waste this so we have a red green blue combo um as the last cards in our hand so we're just going to waste Freya's card right there um get it out of our hand and now we're actually going to move into a color cycling phase so for you guys that don't know as well phase two and phase four of every single stage of the deer is actually going to be a color cycling phase so on phase two here we want to do a color cycle so as i explained remember you have to follow the order of the type advantage so you can start with any color by the way you can start with any but it just has to follow that order so if i start with red i do green blue next if i start with blue you do red green next and if i start with green you do blue red next right so that's kind of the idea so if we start with green here let's just start with brunhild right so we'll do green we do green we do blue we do red and then we can actually follow up green right because that's going to get us the kill right there on this part of the fight so yeah now it shows blue on the boss right there as you guys can see on the top left you'll see the little blue icon now it shows red and then it's going to cycle back to green where you can keep the color cycle going so right here boom it's going to hit to green we are going to proc the Jormungan passive and then we're actually going to deal a lot of damage now you guys have been noticing probably that my Jormungan is actually ranking up my cards in my hand now this doesn't actually affect the rank up passive of the deer so if you guys uh don't know um this passive right here is actually not affected by Jormungan's rank up because Jormungan's rank up works differently in that it's not a skill use rank up it's through the uh holy relic right so for you guys that don't know your holy relic is going to remove debuffs from all allies and increase ranks of all the skills when each of the three allies uses one or more skills in like the near demonic beast battle so pretty much whenever you proc or passive you're going to get the increased rank up of skills and remove debuffs from allies which is very very strong so that's how i was able to get the rank ups right there now for this phase right here guys he does have a 25 percent hp damage cap so if you want to move into the next phase you want to be able to deal a lot of damage and uh do i think it's um, well, with uh, the one that's in his ultimate here, we might be able to actually kill within uh, three cards because he does double damage on his death because um, he's six out of six but in general though if you're going through this phase you'll have to use four different cards so what i like to do in a situation like this is i'll do like double cards with like brunhild right because it's two cards and then we'll do like you know we'll do like Askinor, and then we'll do freyer and that's going to be enough damage to make sure that we actually kill because we're going to do one uh, 121 000, right and it's going to do 121 000 again right because brunhild's going to be able to hit that damage cap and then askinor is going to go for the single target which is going to do 121 and then freyer is going to do 121 and actually make sure we get the kill right there while moving in and reprocking your mingan passive all right guys so now that we've loaded into the final phase here the final phase again is going to be another color cycle phase now the way it works is that if you actually start the color cycle now um you'll actually remove that hp buff that he has when you finish the color cycle and he's going to be able to take a lot more damage so when i actually do the color cycle here we we'll start with green so we'll do green blue red and then we'll finish with green and just like that guys we're gonna be able to do the full color cycle and the boss is gonna die so it's very easy the moment you get to this point in the fight you'll be able to do the full color cycle and you'll win so you guys see the one escinor actually did kill with the double hit because he has death on his ultimate so that's gonna be another uh reason why you know characters like the one ultimate or uh, the one escinor and freyer are actually very very strong characters for the deer so that's floor one right there guys let's hop into floor two and let's explain that all right guys so now we are hopping into the floor two of the ithernir demonic beast battle now on floor two guys there's going to be a gimmick that you guys want to know about um that's going to be a little bit important especially if you're running the basic stack card set just like me um because if you have this basic stack card set you'll become immune to freeze and that's actually going to be a little bit of a bad thing depending on how you go about the fight so we'll talk about it when we get to phase two of floor two but phase one right here guys if we actually check the skills of the ithernir he's going to have the single target charge effect he's going to have aoe spike and he's actually gonna have a buff card that gives him 200 of attack and then his aoe here is actually going to be a deplete ultimate move gauge skill that's going to be a splash shower effect his ultimate's also going to be life still right here so he's going to heal a lot when he ults other than that though it's going to be a standard phase of the deer um you don't have to do any color cycling again remember it's going to be only on the phase two and the phase four is when you color cycle so this phase we just have to keep the yorming passive going 
All right, guys, so what we're going to do on this turn here is we're going to do the Escanor single target. I'm actually going to do the Brunhild attack card and then waste the Jormungand attack card as well and then just move cards with Freya right here. That's going to actually proc the passive right there for Jormungand just so that we have a ton of all stats when going into that next phase so that we're a lot more tanky and, and just deal a lot more damage. So right there, we do get the rank up from Jormungand's Holy Relic, and we actually do get some merges right here on the one Escanor, which is actually going to be um, not too bad for us, but it actually could be a detriment when we do get to that second phase, which I will explain, um, you know, related to the freeze, right, uh, from the Demonic Beast Battle cards that we're running. So right there, he does the double single target onto us. We actually are going to tank that fairly well. And now with this, uh, you know, hand right here, I want to make sure that we move into the next phase, making sure we have one of each color card at the very least. So what I'm going to start doing, guys, is just going to be wasting cards right here um, that I don't necessarily need here. So I'm going to waste this. I'm going to waste that. And that's going to make it so that we have blue, red, and green just to make sure that we have the color cycle. And then we're just going to finish off this phase and um, move into the second phase here. So moving into the second phase, guys, the boss is actually going to have fixed damage. So when we see it, his health bar right here you guys will see um when we actually load in boom the boss is actually gonna have fixed damage so if we look at his uh his hp right here um fixed damage means that uh, all the damage dealt to him is only gonna be one when attacked but the way you remove that is by color cycling now the uh, the other gimmick of this phase as well is that when you off color cycle and you get uh you know you do like uh let's say i'm doing like blue red but then i do another blue card right and then i get frozen right every even turn of the fight when actually doing this uh, demonic beast is going to actually benefit you because when you get uh, off colored you're going to be frozen and as you guys can see from icy pond inflicts damage equal to 10,000 percent of attack on all enemies and it misses frozen targets so this is kind of like the bird where you know if you have a taunt up you actually don't take damage for the deer's gimmick you have to make sure one of your characters are frozen every even number turn so every two four six eight uh those turns you want to make sure that one of your characters are frozen and the reason why i mentioned that that this card set can be bad is because if you have maximal to move gauge you actually cannot get frozen which can be a detriment uh if you get in that position so what we're gonna do here guys is we're gonna do our normal color cycle so let's start with blue All right let's do blue red green and then we can actually follow up with escanor blue here um so let's actually click the uh, escanor card as well and then that's gonna actually do a good chunk of damage since it's gonna be a rank three card as well so we do the blue red green that's as you guys can see gonna remove the fixed damage right as we hit the green card boom gives us the all stats and now we can actually damage this phase of the fight so now on this turn specifically right if i'm attacking into the boss right now on this turn i have to attack off color with a character that does not have five ultimate move gauge so that we can actually get frozen and then do well on this fight so uh, i'll show you guys the example here i'm in a position where i can kill but i will show you guys the example regardless just so you guys can get an idea of like what it looks like when you get frozen and then not taking the hit so what i'll do here is i'll just attack off color i'm just gonna attack with uh let's do uh yeah i guess we could just do uh Jormigan right there let's just get frozen with Jormigan. um i'm just gonna attack in once get frozen just so you guys can see what happens so you want to do uh one of your characters attack off color boom because i attacked with a green character into the red and now that he goes for the attack right there it's gonna do no damage completely as you guys can see so that is why you definitely not uh, do not want to be uh, running this card set as much, right? Because of the freeze. Or you have to just bear in mind that if you're at maximum ultimate move gauge, you have to go for the kill, right? So that's kind of the idea, guys. So now let's actually finish off this phase here. So we'll do red, we'll do green, we'll do blue. And then we can actually uh, waste the rest of my cards here and uh, clear out this phase of the fight. So very, very easy. But uh, I just wanted to explain that for you guys so you know when going into this phase what you want to be doing, right? That's going to be very, very important. So boom. And then uh, with Askin right here, we're actually going to get the hit off and boom, that's going to get us the Jormungand uh, all stats again. And right now we have a very bad hand though, because it's all green cards, right? This is going to be a little bit bad. So we have to hope we do get some top decks and we actually do get a top deck of red and blue right there. So we're going to have to make sure we hold on to those cards. Now for what I want to do here in terms of clearing out my hand, I actually am going to start wasting a bunch of these cards here. So we're going to do this card, this card, this card with uh, Brenhild, and then I'm actually going to waste the uh, Freyer card because we will top deck ultimate. The only way that this messes us up really is if the next phase we actually get the gauge reduction passive which will definitely mess us up uh, but on this phase guys nothing really important uh is happening other than the fact that he has a max hp increase so right here as you guys can see though the amount of damage we're doing regardless of the hp increase or not um is not really going to be affecting us too much and then boom right there we actually do one phase so very very good um so let's see do we get the gauge reduction passive we don't good um so the passive that we actually did get right there this is a good one 
This is uh, increase the hero's basic stats by 0.5% for every orb in the, in the ultimate move gauges on the battlefield, including the boss and including us. That's fine though. This passive is a lot better than the gauge reduction passive because you can't manipulate when you have an ultimate or not. Um, so now that I have an ultimate with red, I didn't top deck a card with Freyr, but I can use this card instead, which is going to be very, very good. So let's start with green. So we'll do green because Jormungand has a damage dealt uh, uh, ultimate right here that increases all allies damage dealt by 42% at 6 out of 6. So we're going to drop that card first. Then we're going to do the Asinor card because green, blue, and then we're going to do red. And then we're going to follow up with the Brunhild ultimate at the end to make sure we do full color cycle and uh, finish off the fight here, guys. So boom, we're going to do the blue. And then red right there with Freyr. Because because Freyr has death damage, he's actually going to kill right here. If you don't have a fully 6-6 six, six Freyr, you're going to be able to do this even with lower dupe. And you'll have Brunhild ultimate follow-up or another green card to just follow up and kill there, guys. But there you go, man. That's going to be the floor 2 of the Aetherner Demonic Beast battle. Alright, guys. So we are moving into the floor 3 of the Aetherner Demonic Beast battle. I'm going to be explaining the rest of the phases uh, with this part of the fight. And then you guys should be completely good when clearing Demonic Beast uh, Aetherner. So hopping into the fight here, guys. Let's actually check the skills of what Aetherner is able to do on this phase. But as you guys can see, he does have a Prevent Ultimate Move Gauge from Filling card. He does also have the Allowing the Use of Only Rank 1 Skills card as well. He does also have Shock AoE. And then he's going to have Disabling Attack Skills Single Target. So on this phase right here, guys, we actually do want to save the Escanor cards here because uh, Escanor is going to be the one that gets targeted by the Aetherner Demonic Beast. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do the uh, card with Brunhild. We're going to do the card with uh, Jormigan right there. I'm actually going to wait this card with Freyr and then move Eskinor's cards instead of doing the other way around where we move Freyr's cards. This is going to be fine and it's going to uh, force the boss to actually attack seal us but when we do get that debuff immunity it's going to be a, lo a lot better for us when we move into the next phase. So boom we do get the rank up right there and now uh, we're going to get attack sealed on Eskinor right here right so that's going to force us to only uh you know to not be able to use our cards right here so we're going to have to hold on to those but we have a lot of green cards right here because of Brunhild um so we're going to have to start wasting those as we move into the next phase so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to waste the uh, yormingan card i'm actually going to do this card right here or brunhild and then i'm going to waste this card and this card as well so that we only have one green card because we have two green characters guys you're going to get a lot more green cards coming in and so you want to make sure that you're always wasting them whenever you get the chance right so whenever i get the chance to just like waste cards here i'm just going to always throw them out and then uh, i should be completely fine right here Moving into phase two right here, guys. Um, phase two is going to be a color cycling phase, as we know. But one thing to note about this phase as well is that he does actually have a uh, buff card where increases the monster's damage taken from certain attributes. So when you get to, I think it's turn three on this phase of the fight, you will have to do a color cycle. But he takes 500% more damage from the color cycle from uh from a hit after you do a color cycle. So you'll do a color cycle. It'll be like you know blue, red, green, and then uh, let's say he takes more damage from uh, blue when you follow up with a blue he's going to take 500 percent more damage from blue so that's uh kind of something you want to take uh, take into account you will have fixed damage as well for those first uh three uh color cycles when you get to that third turn but for us since we're going to be going through it really really quickly here we're not going to necessarily have to worry about so uh, about that so let's hop in let's do green blue red and then we're actually going to follow up with another green card as well and that's probably going to finish off the fight here or if it doesn't finish it off it's actually going to get us very very close to moving into the next phase so we do the Eskinor card right there we do the Freyr card and then we're gonna get the rank up right here onto uh Brunhild and then Brunhild's actually gonna get the kill it looks like here so let's see uh here we go and boom that's why we run crit chance rolls as well on Brunhild so that when you do lose all stacks with Jormungand you're still dealing a lot of damage now moving into the phase three here guys we want to make sure that we have one of each color moving into the uh moving into the final phase we also want to make sure that we actually have a buff removal card right here from Jormungand because that's going to be very important for that final phase when uh I explain exactly what the mechanics are when we get there so let's just start wasting cards here let's do two cards from Eskador right we're going to do two cards from him and then we're going to do a Jormungand card and we're actually going to do a Freyr card right here and what that's going to do is that's going to make it so that we keep the Jormungand passive while wasting all of our cards right here um the only dangerous thing about this actually is we might not get ultimate or we might not get a top deck with Freyr so I actually am going to not do that and actually just waste the Eskinor card anyway right this is this is not going to get us Jormungand passive but if we wanted to get it there we would have used Freyr card and hope for the top deck but because I know I I want to make sure that we have one of each card at least uh, going into the next phase we always have to make sure that we don't use Use cards like that um, unless you're pretty much forced to use them right unless you're on a color cycling phase and need to use them all right so right here guys we do have ultimate with uh, the one Eskinor. that's going to be really helpful for when we're on that final phase
this. Um, he's going to go for the AoE right there, and it's not going to deal a lot of damage. You actually are going to tank that fairly well. And then uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to make sure we clear out our hand as we move into the next phase right here. So I'm going to do um, this card right here with Jormungand. I'm actually going to do this card right here. I'm actually going to do uh, this card right here with Asinor, and then just waste that card follow-up. And what that's going to do is it's going to make sure we uh, finish off this phase of the fight, and we're going to move into the final phase with one of each color uh, in our hand. Um, it's going to be very, very important as well. So right here, guys, we do the single target with Duskinor, boom, and then follow up with Jormungand right here with the rank 3 cards that we have in our hand. We should be completely fine uh, on this uh, final phase of the deer. So we're loading in. All right, guys, so loading into the final phase right here. Remember, um, the final phase is going to be another color cycling phase. And as you guys can see, he does actually gain fixed damage. Now, the way we remove the fixed damage is going to be by doing a color cycle. And one thing that I will mention about this phase of the fight is that he actually does have a stand skill where he actually will counter you and deal a on an insane amount of damage the only way you can block this counter is by using a character that has a barrier so the only characters that i recommended on the actual team sheet was uh green malasila on the demon team and you can actually if you get to that part of the fight um you can use her shield and uh, and then uh do a color cycle and you'll be completely fine and you can negate this counter completely if you don't have a shield character you're not going to be able to deal damage to him and then you pretty much lose the fight another thing as well guys is that the boss does have an evasion buff just like kind of the bird where he gets the uh you know attack defense and hp basic stat buffs and then he also gets evade for one turn so that's why we want the Jormungand buff removal card just in case right so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna uh do the color cycle we're actually gonna start with blue so that we can use the one ultimates uh or the one Eskinor's ultimate right so we're gonna do blue red uh, we're going to follow up with green, and then we're going to go blue. Boom. And what that's going to do is that's going to do a double damage cap and actually get us very, very close to killing this phase of the, uh, of the deer. One more thing to mention as well, guys, is that the deer will have a uh, revive if you actually get him very, very low on HP. Now, it's kind of the way the bird works where if you get that one revive passive, if you put him less than 20% HP, he will full heal on you and his stats will increase as well. So you want to make sure that you're not doing that and you actually want to make sure you are killing him within that range of HP. So uh, as you guys will see here, he's going to do the AoE. That's going to be a gauge reduction. That's fine. We're going to lose our ultimates and that's completely okay. So right here, you guys are seeing, you guys can see he's about to do the buff card so uh, that's going to be a little bit uh dangerous here and uh because we're in this range of hp right here if he's less than 30 percent hp we can actually go for the kill um right now he remember he has a 30 percent damage cap so if i attack into him it's actually uh, gonna proc his full heal because it'll put him at 10 percent hp so what we want to do here instead is actually attack off color so we're gonna do uh let's just say as an example we do um, double Jormungand, right? We'll do like this card, but Jormungand waste this, and then we can actually do a uh, Freya single target card, and that should actually get us the kill right there, um, because of the range of HP. Or even if we attacked with Brunhild there, because he has maximum ultimate move gauge, this detonate card probably would kill off color as well. Um, but yeah, pretty much though, guys, if you don't get um you know this far into the fight at this point uh in it you definitely want to hold on to this card so that you can remove the evade that he gets and then make sure you kill him on that next turn the following turn after that is when you actually will stand up which will be when you lose the fight so you want to make sure that you're doing this within three turns to actually make sure you get the win um i'm going to be able to do this within two turns because of the range of hp that he's at so i'm actually going to do this setup right here and then finish off the fight uh for us to get the win so i'm actually going to end turn right here and we're going to go for it um one thing i will mention as well guys is that let's say this wasn't to work out right here right so let's say this didn't actually work I could actually pause the game right here and I could actually reload into the fight to make sure that we get the win because what you can do on Grand Cross is if you're not on PC, let's say you're on like just your mobile app, you would just uh, swipe up and close the game. If you're on PC client, you would just right click close the game. If you do, you know, mess up on this phase and you don't get him low enough or you do proc his full heal and you want to do like a different card combo, that's when you would actually reset. But because of the situation we're in right here, we don't actually need to reset and we can go for the kill where, uh, right here with Freyr and as he's going to be able to get the kill. So boom there we go guys that is going to be the guide right there for the demonic beast battle of itherner i hope you guys do enjoy man and don't forget to like comment subscribe as always your boy amazing has been pumping out these guides man and uh this is another big guide for you guys uh in terms of clearing the deer i know the deer is definitely one of those uh other difficult demonic beast battles so i hope this video was helpful if you guys enjoyed definitely make sure to like and subscribe the uh, you know i put a lot of effort into making this video and it would definitely be appreciated i definitely appreciate all of you guys watching the videos regardless and we'll see you guys on the next one man peace out and have a good See you today, guys. See you later, man.